I have been talking about the global birth rate decline. So our conversation is going to move into Canada. Canada's population is about to hit 40 million, but it's not because of young Canadians having children. It's because of immigration. Um, Young Canadians are not having children. The birth rate is actually declining. So let's get into this article. So Canada, like other countries, are talking about the economics of having children and things that are going on in the, um, the whole global, the global situation. The youth of today are facing many issues like economic instability, mental health, and dealing with the lingering disruptions from COVID-19. These compounding factors have added pressure to the roughly 7.3 million um, con- million Canadians aged 15 to 29 and lowered their overall quality of life, according to a new report by Statistics Canada. It's also making them less likely to have children. Folks just can't afford it. Affordability concerns and lack of access to suitable housing were more recently cited as factors influencing the fertility intentions of Canadians, in particular those aged 20 to 29. Lowering fertility rates have been on StatCan's radar for years with with a noticeable trend starting around um, 2009. In 2020, the country's fertility rate dropped from 1.47 children per woman to 1.4. Keep in mind that the United States is currently at about 1.6. So like I said, this is a global trend. StatCan's report also notes recent survey point to Canadian youth being less satisfied in general and less hopeful of the future. One of the common issues indicated is the increased cost of living. Everybody is saying the same thing. For example, in 2022, 32% of youth said that they wanted to buy a home or move into a new rental, but decided not to because of price concerns. These challenges do not disappear once you turn 30. Rather, these challenges are ongoing and may permanently hinder access to access to a standard of living in adulthood that they may have expected while growing up. How cost of housing impacts young Canadians, the price of homes in Canada has soared to the heights that cannot be covered by the average Canadian earner. The national home price, the national average home price was $650,000. That's up 2.1% year over year. This follows a record increase from June to July, 2023. Rental prices have seen similar increases, with the average rental soaring over $2,100 in August. This is just not feasible for young people. And until governments tackle this cost of living issue, which is going up, it's obviously going to impact the birth rate, which will keep declining because people simply cannot afford to have kids. And if people cannot afford to have kids and social services and social safety nets are being cut at the same time, How is this going to work? Okay, so young people are spending about 23 percent compared to 16 percent for other groups to keep a roof over their head. Um, In Toronto, the number jumps to 31 percent is being spent on housing um, versus 20 percent for all other ages. So y'all want young people to be able to afford to live and create babies? Fix this part. Given the median income for Canadians aged 15 to 29 was 25,000 in um, 2021, compared with 41,000 for all Canadians, youth generally had less income available to spend on housing. Higher cost of living um, also mean young people are living with roommates or parents. So it's taking a lot longer to jump into adulthood as of right now globally. You guys can uh, let me know what you are seeing in your areas. At this point, my news apps just give me birth rate decline articles because this one was literally released 14 hours ago. Let's now talk about Greece and what is going on as far as their birth rights, I mean their birth rates declining, even as their population declined. These are the current numbers for Greece. Their birth rate is sitting at 1.34 births per woman. Now, these are in alignment with what is also going on in Italy and Spain. And what can these countries do to turn it around? Is it going to be the economics like the rest of the global economy that's seeing the birth rates decline? Probably. Will they take on and tackle those issues? Probably not because they don't tend to listen. But let's get into the article. 
Greece is currently grappling with a severe demographic crisis marked by the lowest population reproduction rate in Europe. The situation has become increasingly alarming as the number of deaths surpassed that of births. So look at these numbers. In 2010, there were more births than deaths. There was there were over 114,000 births and compare that to over 109,000 deaths. So there were more births than deaths. Now, if you look at 2020, there were a mere 84,000 births. So a little over 84,000 births, but there were 131,000 deaths. Obviously, that was probably exacerbated by COVID-19, but obviously um, the birth rates have still not um, rebounded. With a reproduction rate of 1.3 births per children, Greece now holds one of the lowest rates in the world. This this figure falls well below the stability limit of 2.1 children per woman. I don't know what country, um, there's not very many countries that are hitting over the 2.1 children per woman globally. As I'm sitting up here doing all of this research and looking into these articles, many countries are falling below that 2.1 children um, per woman. Professor Miltiadis, the head of research, the head of the research group for a healthy and active aging Greece at the university, highlighted these startling statistics. He emphasized the urgency of addressing the consequences of Greece's demographic crisis. To tackle this issue, he proposed boosting boosting the employment of working women, young individuals below the age of 25, and even pensioners. Encouraging older individuals to work would help mitigate the economic challenges posed by a shrinking workforce. I mean, they're, at least they are talking numbers and talking economics, but this is a professor. What is the leadership doing? Okay, Miltiadis also shed light on the fact that the aging population predicament is not unique to Greece, but affects developed and developing nations worldwide. Factors such as improved um, advancements in medicine, improved living conditions, and healthier lifestyles have contributed to increased life expectancy. However, these advancements present, um, present challenges as societies now grapple with an aging population alongside a declining birth rate, as evident with Greece's demogra- um, demographic crisis. While immigration could be considered a potential remedy, Professor Miltiadis acknowledged the associated social issues, emphasizing the need for a systemic approach that takes into account the geopolitical developments over the next three decades. I don't know what exactly this means as far as politics and social issues. Do they just not want immigrants in this um, country? I don't particularly know the history of Greece and if they are antagonistic towards immigrants, but if they are like um, the Asian countries that are kind of xenophobic, they if and they don't want immigrants, they are going to be um, they're going to have to fluff up their birth rate numbers simply by getting women to have babies. But like I said, someone needs to clue me in on um, what is going on in the social and economic and geo- geopolitical developments of this country because I I sincerely do not know. Just like many of the developed countries and developing countries, the the age of the first time mom is hitting 30. So I do want to, that's what I highlighted right here. So I bring, continue to bring this out because, you know, the the climate where men are getting online talking about how used up and um, women are that hit over 30 and hitting the wall and all that, it's BS. Globally, women are having babies later in life, especially if they live in developed countries. You guys, um, I have continued this conversation about the birth rate declines. If you guys have any input, any countries that you want me to examine, go ahead and drop it in the um, the comments and let me know what you are seeing in your particular areas. Jump in the comments, let me know, like, comment, share. And if you're enjoying the commentary in the videos, go ahead and give me a follow.